الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال بعض السلف الخوف عصى الله سبحانه وتعالى يسوق بها عباده الشاهدين عن ذلك بسم الله الخوف عصى يسوق الله سبحانه وتعالى بها عباده الشاردين عن ماله. Here is like a stick that Allah سبحانه وتعالى uses to bring the disobedience back to his Lord. Fear. Everything you hear about Allah سبحانه وتعالى nowadays is what? Peace and mercy. Right? No one dares to talk about fear. Why? Because we understand fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we understand fear of the human being. Where the fear of the human being makes you paranoid, incapable of doing, running away. And the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you feel secure, work and act more, and pleasant life that leads to a better life in the hereafter. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا إِنِّي أَعْلَمُكُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْشَاكُمْ لَهِ I am the most knowledgeable or the most one who knows the most about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I am the most fearful. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ the Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him, tell them, I fear if I disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a grievous punishment. I fear. I know him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I fear him. Inna الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بالغيب. Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get the forgiveness or the great forgiveness. The first quality of the believers, in الَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ Those who fear the stand of Allah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ خَافَ أَدْلَجْ يعني بدأ العمل بسرعة أو بكير. Anyone who fears, he starts working quick and early. When you talk about fear, you talk about happiness. Fear in my book and everybody who understands equal to happiness. When you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're happy. When you say merciful, merciful, forgiven, fear makes people work. Mercy and forgiveness, sleep. I tell you, give you a practical example. If you live in a neighborhood or in a house that has zero crime rate, wonderful neighbors, nobody talks about fear or anything. Why would you protect yourself? Why would you do something to protect yourself by get an alarm system or build a, a door or something extra or why? Everything is cool. Now when you talk about, oh, you have a possibility of this and that, then people start protecting. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create hell? If you only talk about mercy and love and all of that, then there should be hell. Brothers, we really have to recalculate our path because we're trying to please someone and prove something that is we're not and we are the right. I don't have, if someone comes at you, oh, and I, I've heard it one time, oh, Muslims are so scared of God, God is going to smite you. Yes, he's about to smite you. If you disobey him, that's what you get. Just like, oh, people are scared of the police. Yes, I am scared of the police. When I'm speeding, I am scared. And when I see his car, I slam my brakes. Why? Because fear makes you act. 
No fear, no action. Why do you take the test? Or why do you obey the teacher? You fear the punishment. Why do you follow the law? You fear the punishment. Why you obey your parents? Don't tell me because I love them, because you are alive. If you, if, every, if everyone loves their parents, just like that, because their parents, they love them, and they don't fear them, that's a lie, pure lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone in the Quran, in the Sunnah, commanding us, take care of your parents, take care of your parents, and we don't. And we don't. And look at the punishment. Taking care of your parents is like Tawheed. The next step after Tawheed. So simple off is worse than committing a major crime. Simple off to your parents and how many of us don't do it? With that threat and with the fear and we barely act. But the problem is we don't know how to present it, especially to young children. Is it true that children you have to keep talking to them about gender and not talk about hellfire? I don't think so. Ya Mu'ad, ihfad illah yahfad. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was Hassan al Hussein, radiallahu anhuma. They ate a date. Picture this a young child ate a date. It's zakah money. They cannot eat it. What did he say? Oh, it's okay. Let him finish it. And then after that, he took it out of their mouth. And he said, Kakh, Kakh, it's not halal for you. You see one person nowadays doing that to a child, and what do you call him? Wallahi, probably every word the non Muslim call you, you would use it yourself on that Muslim. Why? Because our mentality changed. We're trying to please someone, and we're trying to prove something we're not, or we're the opposite of it just to make Islam look so wonderful as if it's not wonderful and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do what you want to do so you attract people to Islam. You think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares if the whole world become Catholic? It doesn't make a difference. He likes for you to be a believer but you're not going to add anything to his kingdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to bring people to Islam, what are you supposed to do? Bring them the right way, the way he wants you to bring them. Don't put yourself in a haram situation and say, oh, people would think good and people would like Islam. Like it or don't like it. That's a choice. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ What happens then? إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارَ Hell is waiting for those who don't want to believe. But it's not like, tell the lie about your religion, fake your religion, so you can bring to Islam. Is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? That's a fact that I thought about the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the other day. I was talking to the students, and I conclude with it. The hadith simply say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hadith could say, وَعِزَّتِي By my honor لَا أَجْمَعُ لِعَبْدِي أَبْنَيْ وَلَا خَوْفَيْ By my honor, my servant will not have two safeties or two fears. إِنْ خَافَنِي فِي الدُّنْيَا أَمِنْتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ If he fears me in this life, I give him safety the hereafter. وَإِنْ أَمِنَنِي فِي الدُّنْيَا أَخَفْتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And if he feels safe in this life, I'm going to scare him the day of judgment. End up with what? End up with fear equal happiness. Because when you fear, you obey. And when obedience provides happiness. Show me an obedient person, not happy. Show me a person who doesn't commit sins and obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and live in a miserable life, even if he has every problem in the world. You would see him humbly telling you, Alhamdulillah, I am in a great ni'mah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous because he puts the happiness in the heart, not on the outside. 
So fear equals action and action equals happiness. Show me a scared person who is yani, yani the fear. I, I give you <coughs> something and I keep saying I'm going to conclude, but I'll conclude with this one. If I'm reciting Quran to you about hell and the beautiful recitation moved you, made you really think, what's the end thing? What's after that comes? Tears, cry. Do you like anybody to interrupt you? When you're crying, listening to a khutbah or listening to Quran, would you like someone to come and take you out of there and maybe take you to the nurse or to 911 or to someone and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, Habibi, don't cry. You, you, you probably hit him. Leave me alone. Why? Because you're happy. <coughs> That's what fear does, gives you happiness. SubhanAllah. So, what do we say? Fear Allah subhanahu But, everything has a limit. Some people may just <coughs> panic to the point like, if they have sins, they say, oh, God is not going to forgive me. No, then go to the mercy side now. If you come up with sins from here to the, to the sky, and you sincerely say, Astaghfirullah, it's erased. So make sure you balance, but I focused on fear because I see the scales tipped for the mercy and the forgiveness and fear, it doesn't exist anymore. So that's why my focus is there. But the real best life is to balance fear and hope and you will be the best. Jazakumullahu khairan, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu